Good morning. So today we're at the wonderful um, Cheryl Hills and this is a place I've come to many times and absolutely love. And today we're going to be talking about um, manual focus and manual lenses. So um, today I'm going to use a completely um, uh, manual lens and um, this is a fantastic, really underrated uh, lens. So this lens is made by um, a company called uh, Viltrox and um, it is, this is a um, 20 millimeter um, f1.8 lens and the great thing about it is it's incredibly sturdy and incredibly solidly made and um, it produces really really good image quality um, some of the edges are a bit dodgy but it's basically fantastic color rendition and really sharp in the center so um, what we're going to look at is, um, is how to use this lens with landscape photography. Now the sun has just risen on these beautiful hills and um, I'm going to take you through a few of the, uh, the, 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 the settings and the things you need to consider when using a manual focus lens. Okay, so here we are looking at, at my scene from the back of the camera. There's some beautiful um, low-lying mist coming in here now. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that I do especially with my Z7, is I set the AF on button to zoom in to my focus. Now, this is a great way, just on its own, of getting focus. You just zoom straight in, and then you can check whether you're in focus or not, and then you can zoom out again. So that is a real help. So wherever your, wherever your focal point is, whether you put it in the middle or wherever you put it, you can then zoom into that area and check that you're in focus or not. Um, second thing to make life even easier is focus peaking. So if I come over to this area here, for instance, and I look at the lovely Lansdowne Monument as it is, okay, and um, I'm just going to take this out for a second. Okay, right. So if I look at this, I can see that the Lansdowne Monument isn't in focus at all. Now, obviously, I can just use my eyes, but I can also use focus peaking. Now, focus peaking is a, um, is a very clever device on mirrorless cameras uh, where you're able to really see the, um, uh, the, 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 the focus come alive by a red outline. And as you can see, there's a very, very clear red outline around my image. Now, if I zoom out of that, you can see that there's a clear red outline around the whole area. Now I know that that is in focus. So the other thing is, is um, as you can see here, um, the f-stop uh, is blank. And this is because um, I've had to set up my camera um, so that it it's, um, uses non-CPU data. Um, in other words, uh, there are no contacts on the back of this lens. There's no way of the camera um, knowing apart from the fact that you can manually expose everything in the back of the viewfinder. So I've got my aperture ring set to f8 here at the back and um, I'll, I'll talk to you more about that in a minute. Um, the wonderful thing about manual focus is the ability to, um, to, to use that really long focus pull which is fantastic. Now, the sun's coming up, so let's take some images. So the first thing is, I'm just gonna bracket these images. So I'm gonna probably just go for three separate shots. I've got it on ISO 100, so I'm going to use a um, two second timer. Just to go through those, I had it on 20 seconds. And I'm gonna take a shot. Okay, so this is the next bit. So this is the aperture ring here. So um, this is a non-clickable aperture ring. Um, makes it good for video work um, and uh, the ability to, um, to, to, to cycle through the, the f-stops really easily. But in terms, of, um, in terms of photography, it's absolutely fine. So it um, goes from f1.8 up to f16. Now, for a lens like this, I keep it at about f8. That's really important. Now, so that's relatively straightforward. Um, and then on the top here, um, we've got our big focus ring. Now, this is really, really nicely dampened. 
and you can clearly see the range markings on it and the hyperfocal scale as well. Now, a lot of um, manual focus lenses, it's important to check the infinity point because the infinity point sometimes is completely in with the manufacturers, but these slightly cheaper lenses, it can slightly, it can sometimes be slightly out and you might want to put a mark on your lens where it is. As it happens, this one's bang on in this, in this particular case. So you've already got the aperture that you, that, that you desire, that you want. You're thinking, okay, um, I want to get everything in focus and I want to make sure I've got a good um, sharpness throughout my image. So you really need to find out with your lens what f-stop what is the best for that. Um, with this lens, it's round about f8, um, obviously, depending. And then you've got this wonderful manual focus throw, which is just an absolute joy to use. And it's something that a lot of um, uh, autofocus lenses just, just don't have the same kind of feel to them. And it's taking that time with a manual focus lens and really enjoying the process. Okay, so the sun's really starting to come up now on this beautiful landscape. We've got this beautiful low-lying cloud in the background. And it's time to really use a manual focus lens to get some compositions and really think about how we're going to do this. So let's give it a go. So, um, so the first thing I'm going to do then, I'm going to check my focus. And I'm going to make sure that focus is where I want it to be. So I'm going to zoom in and use focus peaking. So I'm looking for the, um, the, the red areas. It's good to pull out of focus and then pull back into focus just to um, just to make it you're, you're completely confident that your shot is in focus. Now I can see here, I've zoomed into these pylons here on the edge of the hill. They've gone bright red. It's on F8, so I'm pretty much good to go. So I just need to make sure that I've got it on um, two second timer for sh shutter release. Um, and I'm going to go down to um, ISO 64. So yeah, when you zoom in, you really see that cloud coming across now. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, now, although I'm using this lens, I might have to, uh, I might have to just take out my 24 to 70 as well in order to zoom in a little bit to the landscape and try and get different compositions within the landscape. So now I've got my um, 24 to 70 on, I'm going to zoom in. However, I'm going to use manual focus and I'm going to use manual focus, um, the manual focus ring at the back of the camera, which isn't quite as nicely damped. Um, and I'm going to really, really concentrate again on the, um, getting compositions that I feel are trying to just kind of slow things down and, um, and use this lens in the same way that I was using the Viltrox. So, I'm going to um, shoot at f8 um, at ISO 64, and I'm going to do a two second shutter release and take the shot. Okay, now sometimes it's about zooming into those details and really of getting those areas. There's an absolutely beautiful area on the hill here with this low-lying clouds just being pushed away now by the sun. So being able to really zoom into that area is, um, is, is really creating a really beautiful composition. Okay, so I'm set up for the second composition. So um, again, I'm using manual focus. Now, sorry to come away from the, uh, the, the manual focus Filtrox lens so quickly, um, but it's really, really important um, to use the right lens for the right job. And in terms of right at this moment, there are some absolutely, it's a beautiful kind of um, area of light um, coming, coming in front of the hills now. And it's really, really important to pick up on those details. So again, I'm using focus peaking. I'm going to um, just 
focus in on my, on my focal point, which is this kind of mist down below, and just have a quick look and just make sure that this is completely in focus. So again, as I um, take it out of focus, those red lines will disappear. As I bring it back into focus, the red lines will then appear again. And they'll appear quite strongly where it's most in focus. Now it's worth not just having a look at the, the focal area that you're looking for, but also for the rest of the shot as well. So coming down to here, just checking that I've got those areas in focus that I need in focus. The manual just slows everything down. It allows you to really, really look at things. And for instance, you can see here the peaking lines just over these trees here. So you now know that that's all in focus and that's where you want it to be. That's just spending time making these compositions and really thinking about these compositions. So again, I'm just gonna go for two second timer. So um, it's on uh, uh, F8 and ISO 64 and let's take the shot. Okay, so there's a good range of colours there, there's a good range of textures and tones. The sun is just starting to kind of lift off the hill and change direction. So it's just getting that shot in, just in time. So here we are, so set up for another shot. Now I've gone back to the, the, the Viltrox um, 20 millimeter manual focus lens. And um, looking at this wonderful shot across here, so across the Lansdowne Monument, and just taking this kind of path um, uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with, the, with the light going on the grasses and kind of leading you into the scene. Now, again, what I'm going to do with the scene is I'm going to take you through and I'll show you on the screen this time. So um, first of all, uh, I'm going to check my focus and check that I've got um, peaking where, where it needs to be and where my focus needs to be. So a couple of quick things that you can do. If you look at the, um, at the range on your lens, Manual focus lenses have it clearly laid out, which makes it much, much easier. So basically, you can just go straight to infinity. When you've got a scene like this, most of it is gonna be in focus and infinity. Now you might need some very, very fine tweaking, but that's a really, really good way to start. And then you're halfway there already. Okay, so we're gonna start off with um, just taking it to infinity. And then I'm gonna check my focal point and I'm gonna zoom in again, like I did before, just to check my scene. Now, um, don't just rely on focus peaking because, as I said, it relies on looking at um, fine edges and hard edges. So the Lansdowne Monument, for instance, fine, but kind of um, uh, lower areas of grass further away and things like that, it's not gonna be so clear. So I'm gonna look around the scene, make sure I'm in focus. And then I'm going to just take it down and just check my focus in the foreground area as well. And then I'm going to take the shot. So, manual focus lenses then, they are just fantastic. They're so versatile, um, it slows your photography down. In terms of um, mirrorless in particular, it uh, allows you to, um, to use the focus peaking system and to use um, the, um, the manual uh, functions that allow you to see exposure and th through the viewfinder, which is just invaluable. And I think it just, it allows you to really consider your composition, especially if you're using a manual focus prime lens. You can't zoom in. 
um, you need to walk and look and take time. Um, the beautiful dampened focus ring as well on lots of manual focus lenses are fantastic. Now they all have their foibles, uh, this Viltrox lens isn't perfect um, but it's got so many great attributes to it. Um, the build quality and lens quality are generally really excellent for the price. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and um, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. So that's it for this video. Uh, um, if you'd like to know more about um, use of aperture, use of shutter speed, long exposure, um, and, uh, and how to use your camera, um, then please have a look at the, at the following links. So we've got um, uh, recently done a video on how to use aperture, recently done a video on how to use shutter speed, and those two really go together with a manual exposure, a manual lens.